Let's make this professional sports poster design in Photoshop. So we're gonna start by dragging in our player cutout. We have Alex Atkins of the Colorado Summit today. And let's get to work right away on the foot shadows. So just going to a black brush and we'll take a pretty flat brush as well. And just by bringing in these edges, we'll lower the flow down to something around 12% and we can use the bracket keys to bring up the brush size and just paint ever so slightly by his feet and make sure it's darker on the parts of the foot that are touching the ground and then kind of fade it out from there maybe in front because he's leaning over same thing with the disc so we'll get like this this near edge looking darker gradually fade it out and then we could probably just put on a new layer of kind of a soft shadow on the whole thing. If we wanted to, we could also sell this hand being a little bit in front of the foot. So maybe we make a new subtle shadow just like around there for the hand. We're gonna run our cutout through camera raw filter. So let's go up to filter, camera raw filter, just do some basic retouching. We can boost the texture and clarity a little bit right off the bat. Also gonna brighten it up. It's a pretty dark looking cutout from the initial photo. So I just wanna boost those shadows so we're getting more of the jersey detail in the middle there. I also wanna play with the skin tones a bit. And we can do this in camera raw filter or if you go to your selective color adjustment layer, we will do it in here, but I just wanna get more of the reds into his skin rather than having it look too yellow. So when you play with the oranges, it can bring out the color a little bit more. So we'll start with something right around there for our basic retouching. I still wanna bring a little bit more into the skin tone. So let's go ahead and add that selective color adjustment layer, clip it to the cutout layer by holding option, hovering in this space and clicking. And then with the reds, selected, we can lower the cyan value to boost the red we're seeing both in the jersey and his skin tones. And you can maybe play with the magenta a bit, but that's feeling better, like it's popping more. We can also look at the yellows and that's doing a little bit as well. Now let's continue our retouching with some curves adjustments. Let's bring in curves layer, again, clip it to the same cutout layer. For this one, we're gonna mess with the highlights. So let's take a point around the middle and just boost this. And then with the mask, you can invert this mask. Command I is a shortcut to hide this layer. And then we're just gonna brush on, we'll go back to a normal brush with a sort of softish flow. We're just gonna brush on some lighting. So because we have the shadows on the bottom, we're gonna have the light coming from the top of the cutout. So let's start painting on slightly just around the, the top edges of our cutout. And we can make sure to accentuate the parts that the light is naturally hitting the photo, like on this jersey sleeve and then some of this wrinkly detail. So I'm just painting where I see the highlights and then also just generally on the back where this overhead light would be hitting him. A little bit on the arms. And this is just gonna give it kind of an overall more 3D effect. It'll just add some depth to the final look of this cutout. Now we can do the same thing with the dark tones. So let's duplicate this curves layer with Command J. Again, clip it. We're gonna delete this layer mask just by right clicking, deleting it. And then we can lower this curves layer to around there. And then holding option, if you click the mask icon, that'll automatically put a black mask on. And now we can do the same thing. And I'm gonna start off with a little stronger brush just so we can really darken this bottom part of our cutout especially around the shoes where presumably no light is hitting, causing the darkest shadow. So also with the disc. Now I wanna lower the flow back to like 20-ish and we can get more into the finer details we would, we don't, where we don't want as exaggerated as an effect, but still enough to separate the shadows from the highlights. Be patient with this part, practice it a lot. This is going to be a big reason why your designs look or don't look as good as they could. It's a pretty noisy cutout. There's a lot of grain just naturally in him. I wonder if maybe we should denoise. Let's do that. Let's go back into camera raw filter, denoise a little bit. We can also shrink him down a little bit so it's not as noticeable. We can bring up the noise reduction, something like 27. Feels good. That's a lot smoother looking. And now let's group this whole thing into its own folder, call it cutout and shrink it down 
ever so slightly. Already you can see this is the basis of like a really clean looking design just with the cutout alone. Now let's work on the background. We're gonna drag in this image of Colorado. Got this from unsplash.com. It's really nice scenic road view of the mountains. And now we're gonna put a gradient map on this background. Let's go to your adjustment layers, go to gradient map, and let's sample a blue from his jersey. Yeah, maybe a lighter one. Okay, going with that, we'll bring the whites up so we're like really fading out this top part of the mountains. And then you can even bring the slider over a little bit to brighten up. So let's go with this as our background filter. And I'm gonna drop a white circle over this whole thing. And what that's gonna do is just further separate the background from the foreground. And you kind of have this natural separation from the road that is now just a blown out white block. But I like the, the shape of a circle better. So just with your ellipse tool, if you hold shift and draw up a circle with your mouse, we can create this shape so we can place it around there. Cause I don't really care about the lower detail in the image, just interested in the mountain. Even the side stuff, I'm not, super interested in. Maybe we can flatten out the circle a little bit just by blowing it a bit bigger. Now this is Alex Atkins. We're gonna make kind of like a fake player logo and I'm gonna do that with text. Let's make a new layer and this is gonna go behind him in this dark space. Let's type out two lowercase a's. I'm using the font Nautica. Maybe we use a uh, Nautica medium. And I'm just gonna blow this up so we can see it better. And I'm gonna make one of these a's a little bit smaller than the first one. So we'll do like a big A, little A, littler A, still kind of big. And then I wanna make sure they're touching. So let's close this gap just by decreasing the space between letters, which you can get in your character panel. This should be set to 100, but I actually don't like how tilted they are. So I'm gonna skew it holding command hitting T. This is free transforming. If you hold command and drag from one of these top or bottom points, I'm also holding shift, so I'm going perfectly horizontal. This can skew text, so it's kind of like making it more of a parallelogram, and so you can tilt things as you need that way. And it's not perfectly lined up. Let's go to like negative 45. Yeah, just so we're not seeing any of that extra bit of A. I'm gonna blow this up a little bit more just so it's taking up most of this vertical height of the blue space. Instead of white, let's use a jersey color. Now we're gonna eyedropper a light red or pink. Let's see how that looks. Maybe a little darker. Okay, we'll leave that there. And now we're gonna put a interesting field blur on this text, just to make it a little bit more interesting, something to draw your eye in. Let's duplicate this layer first, Command J, in case we mess up and wanna come back to it. I'm just gonna hide that other one for now. This active one, let's go to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters, and then Filter, Blur Gallery, Field Blur. Now, Field Blur allows you to place points of different blur intensity. So if you just click around to place these points, you can then adjust the blur on any of them and basically have more or less blurred parts of a certain layer. And just play with these until you like what you have. I just like this text effect as like a subtle way to make any text a little bit more interesting. Stop there, we'll hit okay. I actually want a little bit darker color on this text just because the blue is lighter. So let's go down to our effects and just drop a color overlay over our text. Maybe we sample this richer hot pink red. And we can adjust the reds at the end of the design. I just wanna make sure this is more closely matching the jersey. So now I wanna repurpose this double A logo and use it in some different ways. So let's Command J to duplicate it. This one, Command T to transform. Let's just blow it up super big. And we're gonna use this as like somewhat of a border just in the corners of this graphic. I wanna set this blend mode to multiply too, but since there's a color overlay on it, let's put it in its own folder first and then set the folder to multiply. And maybe we blow it up even a little bit more, just so we're getting some like interesting color in the corners basically. Helps the design feel a little bit more balanced in my mind, something around there. And then we're gonna round out this composition with some text. We'll put a little bit of text in the bottom left and a little bit in the bottom right. But first I also wanna drop this logo into the top left. I think it looks pretty cool when you place it up there. So let's duplicate this middle one again, drop it down. And it's just kind of like a recurring theme at this point. We'll set this one to white and we'll put this in front of the P 
pink multiply layer. And this one, the blur gallery is kind of getting in the way so we can keep this one maybe totally clean. Maybe we go with like a slight blur. I'm also bringing up my grids to place this exactly one box from the left. Maybe we shrink it down a little bit more. Like I want it pretty out of the way, but I just like these as complementary elements. So we'll continue making stuff like this. Make a new layer, T for the type tool. I'm gonna eyedropper this pinkish red and let's just type out Alex Atkins, one, two, three, four, five, six bases, Colorado Summit, number zero, hybrid. And the font we're gonna do industry, which is a much cleaner, easier to read font than Nautica. And I'm bringing the sizing way down. So if you go back to your character panel and you can choose a font size, I feel like 10 will look good for our purposes. And then spacing, bring it up to 420. And we're just filling this space. Again, we'll, we'll pick those same margins, one box from the left and about one box from the bottom. And I feel like I should put text in the top right that's different than the text in the bottom left. But for the purposes of our design, Let's just duplicate this layer, bring it up to the top. And again, with those same margins, we'll just have this twice repeating text kind of mirroring each other on the top and bottom. Now, of course, we gotta fill this bottom right space too. Now, because his initials are kind of the focal point right in the middle of the design, and his name isn't that legible right off the bat, I do feel like it would help to spell out his name using these same letters in the bottom right of the design as well. So let's go back to our big A, little A, text layer, we'll turn that back on. And honestly, I can duplicate it again, just so we can go back in case we lose it. This one I'm gonna change to a white font and we'll shrink this way down. Honestly, we could probably mimic pretty closely the same size that's up at the top here. So let's just, for the purposes of matching the size, we'll bring it up to its friend. That looks pretty good. Now we'll bring this one back down to the bottom right. And we're actually gonna type out his name. So let's go with Alex. Not big letters, we want small letters. Alex, and then copy, paste. Let's reduce the line spacing so we can see what we're working with. And this one is gonna say Atkins. And the line spacing is okay. I feel like this A, really both A's should be a little bigger. Yeah, maybe like that. What size is that? 132. So let's make the top one 132. It's feeling too big as is now, so I'm actually gonna shrink it down some more. It's a good thought to match the size, but not all things work out as we plan. And then let's stick with that same margin because the S has this like thick point. Let's just use that to line it up. And we can perfectly line it up with this text if we hold command and click on the text thumbnail, we can then justify the bottom points of each. Now let's move on to our finishing effects. Let's make a new layer on top of everything, then Command Option Shift E is a shortcut to apply the image to its own layer. We'll go up to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters, and then Filter, Camera Raw Filter. Let's just subtly adjust some lighting. Yeah, I think lowering the highlights, pretty good. Although I like the shadows where they are right now, the foot shadows can boost the overall shadows. And I think color-wise, maybe we wanna cool this down just to give it a, a blue kind of snowy mountain hue to the whole thing. And then clarity, I don't think we should boost the clarity that much. I'm actually liking a slightly lower clarity. Just kind of smooths the whole thing out, makes it a little bit more dreamy, glowy looking. And then we'll add some grain as well, just so we can better match the texture of the mountain and the letters and the borders we have on the edges. Can also bring down the vignetting a bit. The one thing I'm not loving is just the spacing on this bottom text. I want this pink border to go a little bit more to the right. So let's just shift that over ever so slightly, just so it's more balanced and the text is fitting more in the middle of the pink. So let's go with that, redo our image stamping, convert for smart filters, and let's drag on while holding option, those same smart filters from before. That's gonna do it for our finished Alex Atkins poster. I think the big takeaways from this design are just using color and using what you have with your cutout to build out the rest of the design. And then compositionally, just going with one central cutout, building some supporting elements, that's kind of all you need to round out a pretty good simplistic design. Thanks for watching as always, and let me know if you have any questions.